This is Brad Huff with Jelly Belly Sport Beans, and uh, he's joining us today on the conversation for CyclingIllustrated.com. The first question I have for you, Brad, is you've won numerous um, U.S. and Pan Am championships at, and um, world medals on the track. Why did you ever get off the track? <clears throat> Back in 2008, the Olympic trials, I was uh, the third best, and they take the, they took the top two. And uh, since then, I kind of, you know, had a little bitter taste in my mouth from the sport. Um, and I just wanted to concentrate on the road and uh, do my job. So uh, I actually just got back on the track this last fall in uh, this January. I did two six days in Germany. So uh, I've actually got back on a little bit. How did that go for you? Did you win or? No, no. Uh, six days are a whole different world. It's uh, baptism by fire, and it is probably the hardest uh, racing you could ever try to do. Tell and us what it is. Yeah, like what it is six, six days? days uh, if anyone's familiar with uh, track racing, they have an event called the Madison, and that's where uh, it's a two-man team, and there can be up to 15 teams on the track, so that's up to 30 riders or 20, 24, depending on the probably about 12, 12 teams. And you do a a partner scenario where it's almost like a relay race, but you hand sling each other uh, in momentum and you keep the speed going. And it's an extremely fast paced race. And I call it the worst set of VO2 intervals a, a rider could ever do. Wow. Sounds so, like it would be awesome to watch. Where was that race held at? Uh, I did two of them. Uh, I did the six day in Bremen and I did a six day in Berlin. And uh, they were fast and furious. The 6A in Bremen was on a 166-meter track, and the 6A in Berlin was on a 250. So it was insane. Well, you rode for TIAA Cref and Slipstream, and in 2008, you came to Jelly Belly. What was that transition like coming from the track to the road? You know, it was, it was a different transition. Uh, on TIAA Cref and Slipstream, we were focused kind of towards the team pursuit, and then that fell fell to the wayside, so I uh, got on with Jelly Belly and kind of got on the road, and I uh, just have been focused on it ever since, and I've really had a great run at it. I've had a few, few mishaps here and there, but, uh, you know, it's been a great opportunity at Jelly Belly. Uh, it's actually Jelly Belly presented by Kenda, and, you know, it's, it's a great team. We do a lot of overseas racing in Asia, Japan, Australia, and so... A lot of experience. I gained a lot of experience coming to Jelly Belly. So. so that's good. You've been with them a long time. You, in 2011, you won year. the tour of uh, how long? How many years? Five years now. Five years now. Yeah. In 2011, you won the tour of Lawrence, and then you run. You won the uh, Reality Gateway Cup, and then in 2012, you won Dana Point, and then you took a really fast crit win at Nature Valley. Right. Which one right. of those wins was the biggest win for you? You know, uh, every win is a big win. Uh, I would say especially the Dana Point victory this year because now I am the uh, two-time winner of the Dana Point back-to-back. Uh, -back. I won last year and I won this year. So I don't think any other rider has won the pro race two years in a row consecutively. Uh, and then to uh, have another win... Uh, at Nature Valley Grand Prix at one of the fastest, hardest crits was, was a big deal. Uh, and also winning in St. Louis uh, in front of my home crowd was a great thing. So a lot of races I've done before and a lot of great races I know. But, uh, you know, you always go in with a plan to win, and sometimes it happens. And I just was fortunate to have a strong team behind me to make it happen. What, um, let's talk about that Dana Point race because that was a very fast criterion, if I can yeah. remember right. And I, I did not see, I mean, we all knew Jelly Belly was there. I think uh, United Healthcare was in that. They had a big train and some big guys, and Cash yeah, Call had, had some big guys. Yep, they did a great You came job. out of nowhere. How, how did that thing, what was the progression like in that race that, that propelled well, you? Well, it pretty much country? came down to the point that I had a teammate named Sergio Hernandez, and he put me in the perfect position on the last lap. Uh, he put me right onto the United Healthcare's lead-out train, and... Luckily enough, I was able to get the jump on all the other sprinters and have a push to the line. Well, that's a that was a hell of a win for you. Yeah, yeah, it was that great. Was awesome. Um, I, we got some great photos. Give us the inside scoop on Team Jelly Belly. What's it like from a rider's perspective? 
You know, it's definitely a grassroots program. We try. We have a lot of young, inexperienced riders on the team, and so we're racing for the win as much as we are trying to develop riders and push them to the next level. And with a rider like myself or Jeremy Powers uh, on the team, it really gives a lot of experience and uh, can kind of spearhead a lot of the other riders into performing better and you know going beyond their their capabilities because we give them the experience that they need. Well, will we see Jelly Belly back in the Tour of California? We hope to. You know, there's a lot of uh, political situations uh, with this year's selection. You know, they had more pro tour teams. Um, it was difficult for the smaller teams, and a lot of teams missed out because of it. And that's a huge PR benefit for the for not only our team but other teams. So we're going to push hard. Um, not only politically, but also with results. And I think we've shown that in the last few weeks or two months by g- gaining those results to hopefully get ourselves on the map, um, starting with hopefully getting into Tour Colorado in, in a month's time. Well, that'll be a great, great race. Hopefully they live stream, stream that for us to all see. Oh, they will. I'm sure. I've, I've got a really hard question for you. Maybe, maybe not hard, but um, I was reading some of your blog stuff, and, and you said your acceptance depends on your ability to assimilate into this world. What does that mean? Say that one more time. It says, I remember it right says your acceptance depends on your ability, ability to assimilate into this world. That's what you wrote in your blog. What does that mean? You know, I, I think, uh, <laughs> hold on one second, my wife just came in. And, uh, you know, I, I'm definitely kind of an agro old man and uh, kind of more of a sandpaper attitude uh, with a lot of things. And uh, so a lot of people take me uh, pretty harshly in the races. I might have a nice demeanor on the outside, but in the races uh, I'm not too happy and uh, kind of a mean guy at times. Um, You're just focused, laser focused. I'm, I'm pretty focused. Uh, you know, I try to I try to kill them with kindness, but when it push comes to shove, I, I'll definitely uh, do my best to hold my own. Uh, and then just in general in the world, I've learned a lot and I've experienced a lot. So uh, it's kind of, uh, you know, don't want to be a hypocrite out there. Well, I mean, when you're one of the fastest, arguably one of the fastest sprinters in America, it's okay to have that swagger about you because that's what makes you so great to watch and you electrify all the crowds wherever you go. I mean, they almost renamed Tulsa Tough, Tulsa Huff. I heard it so many times. I'm, I'm working on that. I'm working on that. One, one of the... One of the head head people at Tulsa Tough is from Springfield, Missouri, so we're I'm gonna work to get a little maybe put it in the parentheses down the bottom, aka Tulsa Huff. Maybe we'll get them to do that. <laughs> I have one other question. You said learning is humility in your blog. Could you tell me a little bit about that? Oh, you know this this sport uh, of cycling that we're in is all about humility. Uh, myself, not being the most genetically gifted rider out there, uh, I go through a lot of humility in every race or even every training day, training with guys that are better than me, uh, racing with guys better than me, uh, kind of the fishbowl scenario, especially in track racing, you get this this uh, feeling that you're in a big fishbowl and everybody's watching what you're doing and, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely humbling whenever you just, you know, get your teeth kicked in day in and day out, but then, you know, if you're able to carry carry that with you and move forward and uh, have a result here and there, it's, it's just uh, a great a great vindication on what you've been doing and, you know, proves that, that your work is, is uh, meaningful. You know, you are one of the bona fide celebrities at these races across the country. I mean, I, I'm standing on the sidelines watching you guys sprint, go around. At every turn, I feel like there's people yelling yelling for you. So how does that feel to well, be a celebrity in this sport? It's not just me. You know, Jeremy Powers did just get me on Twitter, so that's going to help out a lot. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, it's the team. It's the Jelly Belly presented by Kenda team. It's an approachable team. The candy company, everyone, I mean, everyone loves candy. And so with Jelly Belly, you know, we present ourselves as an open team. You know, we have an open door policy. If, if fans come up, you know, we let them come in. We sign autographs. We'll take photos. Even if it's five, ten minutes before the start, we'll do our best to, to appease them. And, and, you know, and that, and that means a lot to the sport because if we didn't have the fans, we wouldn't have the sport. And, uh, you know, it, I just have to thank my team for that. It's, it's not things that I've done. It's what the team has created. You know, I saw your dad at, um, I think it was in Tulsa. Yep. And um, 
He's got to come a couple times. You know what? I, I just saw you and him embrace, and it was awesome because he certainly seems like your biggest fan. He is, my, and he tells me that every day. You know, and he's just he's been supportive from the beginning. And I, any any cyclist, male or female, that's that been in, that has been in the sport knows that you have to have a supportive family to be able to make it. Just because it's it's such an expensive sport, it takes so, so much time and determination. And that uh, you know, if you can have the support from your family, you're going to make it that much farther. Do you have brothers my, and uh, sisters, or do what do you say? Do you have brothers and sisters? Oh yeah, uh, I'm the I'm the oldest, the mean older brother of four, and uh, I quickly learned that my two uh, two male siblings are outgrowing me quickly, and I had to apologize for my antics when we were younger. My sister uh, is just as tough, um, so. You know, I've learned a lot throughout the years in my family, but uh, my dad has been a huge supporter. Uh, he's been at, you know, several races. My mom's been at several races. Uh, but for my dad to be able to come down to the Tulsa Tough and uh, feel the energy and see it, um, you know, I didn't win any of the races this year, but to, to be second overall on, on the on the was weekend awesome. was a great, great deal. And, and my dad knows a lot of the riders. You know, he, he knows Ken Hansen, who won it overall. He came and gave Ken Hansen a big hug. And so it's just neat to see that. And my dad really gets to be involved. Well, that, that's awesome to have your parents involved. Um, would you say you had like a motto or something that you that you lived your life by? Oh, I, I think uh, I think I definitely have had many mottos along the way. Um, you know, I, I just I just try to do my best and uh, prove prove others wrong. Is is a lot of, a lot of the, the uh, fodder I use to keep me going. I'm going to switch gears here a little bit. Sure. Give me your your progression, five laps to go. What's your mindset in a race? Because I saw it in I saw it in Crybaby Hill. For exactly, yeah. you guys were all suffering. I mean, yeah, there's a party going on, but there's also a big race going I on. I didn't and see. I heard barely saw any of the party. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So, I know that from a rider's perspective. But you know, it look. I mean, you were with you were in striking distance of winning that race. I don't know mm -hmm. how many people realize that, but as I went back and looked over the film and the footage, you were right there, and you know, right. to get over that big hill. Tell me what your 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 mindset is with five laps to go. You know, definitely uh, find my teammates, or my teammates find me, and we get together. We maintain the train. Uh, hopefully, we're already on the front by that point, or setting up uh, an opportunity to go to the front and take over. Uh, the biggest thing for a sprinter is to stay out of the wind and stay on a wheel. Uh, and keep moving forward because in the sprint, in the last five laps, everyone is trying to be at the front, and so you have to stay ahead of that momentum and uh, maintain your position. That's the biggest thing. Uh, definitely in Tulsa Tough at Crabbaby Crab Hill, you, I had to be in the top five every time going into that hill. Uh, you know, Optum Health did an amazing job pulling pulling the brake back. Uh, I had riders up there, Jeremy Powers doing massive pulls. Uh, he had one of his. Jam Foundation riders, Jeremy Duran up there doing some massive pulls. Uh, you know, and, and going over the top of that hill, we were just catching the breakaway. And uh, Aramon from uh, Colavita jumped, and I was able to, to hold on to his wheel barely. And then over the top, I, I countered, and then Ken Hansen was following me. And so it was it was just more of a drag race from the top of that hill to the line. And, uh, you know, elbows racing, Eric Marcotte was able to hold us off. He was the last remaining rider out of that breakaway that stayed away and eventually won the race. But uh, because I had a great team and I, and I kept myself out of the wind and kept good position, I was able to get third place on that day. If I if I had been more lackadaisical and tried to enter the hill, you know, like 10 back and think that I was going to make it up after the hill, then you just wouldn't have done that because the, the pace was so high and the momentum, you would just miss the surge. That's a good answer. Um, I've got a couple more questions, and I'll let you go. Um, you were the 2005 Elite Crit Champion, 2006 Pro Champion. Correct. Are the you only rider to yeah. ever ever do that. Say that again. I'm the only rider to ever win an Elite and then back it up with a Pro title. I mean, that so, is, that's a monster. That's awesome. But I have a question yeah. for you. Are you more fit now, or were you more fit then? You know, I think I think I'm. I have more experience now. Uh, you know, I was definitely a different rider back then. I had more track speed in my legs. Uh, I think I'm more of a well-rounded rider at this point in my career. Uh, kind of got some of the OMP, the old man power, <laughs> going on. And uh, I think it's definitely uh, enabled me to 
have more opportunities to win races uh, since then. How old are so, you? I am 33. Wow, you're still a young guy. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm, I'm the oldest man on the team. Yeah, well, you're doing great. Um, okay, a couple more. Um, what is the what is this hand holding competition that I've that I've heard about? Can you the tell hand me holding like, competition? Yeah, what is that? Oh, uh, I don't know if it's a hand holding competition, but uh, you know I've just done some funny funny things over the years. Uh, I think several years ago when I was teammates with Will Will, Will Routley, I did a I did a great uh, photo op where I was holding his hand in a team photo, and they actually put it in Bella News. It was uh, pretty funny. I was curious what that was. Okay, so question. How do you warm up for a race? These are important questions for the uh, younger guys. Very, uh, very patiently, you know. And instead of getting on a trainer and just, just doing some barn burners, I try to be, you know, very you know, calm about it and just slowly build up for the race and then let the, let the race kind of get me going for the most part. What are one or two things that you can teach a guy who's coming up um, about racing that uh, be on his way up? Patience, number one. You know, in the race and out of the race can make a big difference. I think that's the most thing that uh, a lot of riders lack, especially in the races. Uh, they're just, their they're desire to be at the front and to be in position, but if they would just calm down a little bit and, and pull back that energy, they would be able to see more that's going on in the race instead of always having to have their handlebars in the move or, you know, on, on the next person's wheel and always moving up and moving up, if they would be able to calm down a little bit and carry their speed a little bit more efficiently, back off a little bit, they would be able to perform better in races. What's left for Brad Huff in, these, in this? What's your next goal? You've accomplished uh, so much, but what do you want out of settling next? Criterion title. I mean, that's, I mean, that's the bread and butter of, of American racing is criterion racing. If I can pull off another national championship, that would be uh, just a feather in my hat for uh, my sprinting career. Uh, really other than that, I would love to uh, hopefully perform in some uh, UCI stage races overseas uh, in Asia, Japan, or uh, even in Australia. That would be some great great wins for me and great performances. Well, do you have anything else that you want to add? That kind of Yeah, yeah one, one second. Go, go get it. Yeah, go get it. <laughs> I love this guy. <laughs> I didn't know how all the fans had enough beans, so I just wanted to make sure we get them in there. All right, all right. You got, did you get all those? I love that. Did come through? I love I, that. I got a couple small ones we can just kind of put in there. Maybe get here. Just make sure to brush, okay? You got to brush after this. <laughs> I love it. This is Brad Huff with CyclingIllustrated.com. He writes for Jelly Belly, presented by Kenda.